Previously on Gears. It is a Tuesday afternoon, and as always, right about this time, we have in studio with us the delightful and wonderful Spike the Car Guy. Uh, compliments of the season to you, Brendy. Thanks to you guys, too. Welcome back. Thanks to you guys, too. Excellent. Okay, so, um, well, lots of things going on at the moment. Yes. Of course, the Detroit uh, Motor Show. The NAIAS, North American Auto International Motor Show of so- or something. Yeah. More commonly known, as you say, as Detroit. And the thing about Detroit is a lot goes on there, but a lot of it is about the American market and what cars they have there. And Very much so. Yeah, so there's a lot of concepts that have come out there that we won't ever see here. Um, and they do things like announce the North American Car of the Year, which is the new Corvette Stingray. Did the Corvette beat the Cadillac? The Corvette beat the Cadillac. And the Mazda. And the Mazda. And then there's the general, uh, some some GM Ute one pickup truck of the year or something. I don't know. <laughs> don't pay too much attention. So, yeah, NIAAIAS is uh, on the go. So there's lots of news on that. Um, Yes. But like I said, a lot of it is not relevant to us. It isn't relevant to us. And amazingly, the first car that we're going to talk about is not present at the, the Detroit Motor Show. Yes, considering uh, how much talk there has been about it. And we spoke about it last year as well. Have and we got the picture up? I don't know. I'm not that kind of an operator. I, I don't Thumbs know. up from Comfort Care, which means the picture is there. It is the Lamborghini. Say it with me now. Huracan! Huracan! Uh, which is uh, the Gallardo replacement after 10 years in production. They killed the Gallardo. They've now given us the Huracan. Yes. Um, and if you don't know, if you haven't seen the pictures, I'll read, <laughs> I'll read what, the, what, the, what the press blurb says about it. Yes, please, do that. Audacious design with sharp edges, modern lithic and sculptured volumes and precise surfaces. Uh, for me, and I'm, I'm saying this with a lot of uh, judgment reserved, yes. I'm not mad about it. Purely because it looks like a miniature Aventador. Hello? And I will reserve that because when I first saw the Aventador, I didn't like it until I saw one in the metal. And then it's just amazing. It is amazing. So, yeah, I can't wait to see that car. Uh, in terms of engine and power, it's all, it's all brand new. Everything's new mm. in that car. They haven't carried anything over. It's been designed in the last detail. The engine's new. Exterior's new. Inter- everything's new. Uh, it's got a hybrid chassis, which is uh, carbon fiber and aluminum elements bolted together, which is kind of the flavor of the day these days with most supercars uh, it's got a new 5.0 liter v10 motor 448 kilowatts 560 newton meters top speed they say of over 325 yeah whether it's 780 or 326 i don't know but it's over 325 correct not to 103.2 seconds at not to 200 in under 10 seconds which is quite impressive but it's also got a double clutch system. It's got, yeah, now another, um, oh, it's called Lam- Lamborghini Doppia Frizione. There we, uh, of course. LDF, which is now another three-letter acronym we can add. We can add to ASC, Basically, ESP, ABD, you name it. Yeah. Basically, another uh, double clutch system. Um, and also, it's also got fully electronically controlled four-wheel drive, or in this case, all-wheel drive. Um, but yes, a double clutch gearbox system as well. And carbon ceramic brakes as standard, which uh, I don't know how it affects the price overseas, but in this country it means it's, it's going to... A set of carbon ceramic brakes for a Porsche, for example, is over 100,000 rand yeah. just for the brakes. Um, and uh, they say that the, delivery, the first delivery to customers is planned for European spring this year. So it's going to roll off the production line September. pretty sharpish. Now, uh, listen, uh, I also I reserve judgment because I, I, I really want to see the car mm. in the flesh. I think, I think it is quite stunning. Yeah, it, is, it is a beautiful car. It really is yeah. a nice looking car. There are two things that I've got a problem with. One. One is, it took them 12 years to design <laughs> a baby Aventador. Okay, that's yeah. the first problem. Yeah. The second problem, with its technology and everything it's got in it, mm. it actually is better than the Aventador. I don't know how you can say that without having driven the thing because the Aventador is a monster of a car. Yes. I mean, that's a V12. It's a beast, that car. And I think the, the focus, uh, from what I can gather from the, from the press blah, blah on the, on the Huracan, Huracan, is that it's more about luxury performance. So it's a little bit easier to drive. Okay. Although, having said that, the Aventador isn't the most difficult thing in the world. Correct. Um, so it's, it's more about luxury and ease of use, a kind of everyday supercar, if you like. I don't know if it's going to be better than the Aventador purely from a power and a, and a mm. performance point of view. But yeah, I guess I get, get what you're saying to an extent. I, I, th- I think the one thing that they have done well here mm. is, is that they've, uh, they've set out a massive challenge to Ferrari and to McLaren mm. 
because this car comes with over 600 horsepower. Yeah, and uh, and and having driven the Aventador, if if any of the if any of the 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 kind of raw performance have fil- has filtered down from that car to the Huracan, it's going to be very impressive to drive. I can't wait to get my hands on one. Yeah, uh, myself. And I was going to mention one other point on that, and mm. it's completely left my head. Um, it's got a massive steering wheel. <laughs> Believe you me, you won't miss it. When you get into well, the does car... It ha- does it have a massive steering wheel or a really small interior? Both. It's most probably got a very small... <laughs> well, listen, the, the, you know, that's the one thing. I, I must say I'm looking forward to, to just getting into this car because mm. the Galardo became very, very tight. It's a very tight car. There's no, there's no room... Uh, within the cabin this one hopefully they've given just a little bit more uh, space yeah and and again if it's anything like the Aventador it will be comfortable although not the most convenient place in the world the Aventador for example is I mean a stunning interior fairly comfortable even on longer distances but very short on things like places to put your cell phone for example I know, but then which again... Is a, which is like a really stupid thing, but if they're going to make it convenient and comfortable in every day, it has to have that stuff. That's the thing. But if you look at the true gist of Lamborghini, <clears throat> of what Lamborghini is and was, yeah, nobody, they didn't give a toss no. when you kept your cell phone. They didn't care if you broke into a sweat while driving at 40 kilometers an exactly. hour. Exactly. They didn't it care was if a the, Lamborghini. Exactly. That's what it was so, about. So, you know what? I'm going to sit there and say, I hope it's a Lamborghini. Well, we can't. well listen, if, if they don't get it right, you're, one thing we're guaranteed of... There's gonna, it's going to be in production for 10 years, and there's going to be like 47 <laughs> versions of it. Exactly. So they've got, they've got time to get it right. They've already got four derivatives <laughs> on this one. Listen, I, I must say, I cannot wait to see it. Um, I just, when I first saw it, I went, oh. 12 years to design that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good one. All right, All right. let's move on. Watch, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, Audi. Yeah, they, uh, yes. they released a concept uh, called the all-road shooting brake, mm-hmm. which is basically uh, they've taken their all-road jeans, their kind of uh, slightly raised suspension, body protection bits, and they've applied it to a, a shooting brake concept. Uh, and what's interesting about this car is it's, it's the first kind of uh, e-tron hybrid that they've, they've put together with this kind of off-road treat, or this all-road treatment, I should say. Okay. So uh, it's, it's basically an e-tron model. If it, uh, e-tron is, is their kind of hybrid uh, next generation propulsion units mm. um, and it's got a lot of a lot of interesting things about this car for example uh, well the, the concept car is also an aluminium and carbon fiber body shell and more interesting than that the wheels it's got 19 inch wheels that are also made of carbon fiber wow the actual rim the actual rim is made My of well, it's a, a carbon fiber reinforced polymer which is basically carbon so very interesting another thing that they've got is uh, the controls for the climate control system are actually built into the vents themselves and when you raise your hand the thing extends towards you so you can operate it i love concept cars which is also uh, what they're going to do in the new tt that's uh, that that interior got shown at uh, at uh, the what is it what show was it the CIFC CES oh CES yeah, yeah they we're in Las Vegas off. yeah they show that off so the next generation electronics that's what's going to be in the TT that kind of uh, the, the controls mounted into the vent itself and it does look very very cool um, it's got uh, another thing on the interior as well uh, that they showed at CES which will also be in the next TT is the instrument cluster where your spe- your speedo and your rev counter are. Is the whole thing is now an active TFT screen, which is uh, something that's been done for a while. Jaguar's got it, Land Rover's got, or Land, uh, Range Rover's got it. I think Merck's got it. Merck's got it as well. So they're mm. virtual dials. But what they've done is they've deleted now the screen in the center console. So the interior is much cleaner. There's no more pop-up screen or permanent screen in the center console. All the information you need while you're driving will pop up directly in front of you. So that's going to be quite cool. As for the show carts, uh, the engine, uh, well, the, the, the drivetrain layout is a, a 215 kilowatt 2 liter TFSI motor uh, and a 40 kilowatt motor driving the front wheels. And then there's a rear mounted 85 kilowatt electric motor as well. And that's what makes it a quattro. Ah. Uh, total system out is, uh, output is 300 kilowatts. And Jeez. according to the folks at Car Magazine, if you can visualize yes. and use your imagination, what you're seeing with this concept car is not so much a shooting brake concept, but a lot to do with the new TT. Okay. Which... Uh, that's quite difficult to visualize from well, that. Well, yeah, I don't have the best imagination in the world, so maybe it's just <laughs> me. Yeah, may, no, I think it's me as well, because I'm looking <laughs> at that car going, mm, TT? Yeah, no, a, I'm not too sure. There's a few lines in that on that, but a uh, very nice car to look at. And, and the nice thing is that they've put some electronics and some so probably some styling ideas in there that are going to make it to production eventually. Okay. 
Good. Now, uh, there, there, there's something that I think maybe we should just explain, and this is the term called shooting break. Oh, dear. Do you really want to go there? Well, it's, Do you really want to go I want to try and simplify it because right. when, when people talk uh, shoot and break, you sit and go, <laughs> oh, my goodness. What? You, you sit and think it's got something to do with the brakes or yeah, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's, it's more of a term used to uh, describe anything that has uh, like a hatch. Well, it, it the the best example I've seen of yeah. best example I've read of a shooting break is that a, a shooting break is a combination between a coupe and a station wagon. There we go. It's a two door station wagon or a five door. But this is the thing because Mercedes Benz have got the CLS shooting break and that's a five door. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I tend to agree with you. It's basically a a, a hatchback hatchback sedan uh, kind of car. It's it's a it's like I say a coupe that's been crossed with a station wagon. There we go. But possibly the worst. Uh, and the most confusing definition of a shooting brake I've ever heard is this one. Yeah. Uh, it goes like this. If the space between the front edge of the front door and the back edge of the front wheel arch is greater than the distance between the rear edge of the front door and the front of the rear wheel arch, then it is a shooting brake. That mu- I, please find that person and shoot them. Sure. Anyway, so there, there we go. Give you an idea of like a shooting brake. For example, like a Ferrari FF. Is, is a, a shooting, shooting break. Correct. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. That's Audi. And I tell you, Audi are doing some amazing things. Watch them at Lamar. I think they're going to clean oh, up Lamar. scarily. All right. Well, she got uh, Spike Man. Uh, just a very quick note on uh, Jaguar Land yes. Rover. Uh, every year every year now, well, this is the fifth year running, they're going to have the Samola Hill Climb. Terrific. Uh, which is a great event. It's, it's, a, hill, it's a hill climb event through and through. It's, mm. That's all it is. Basically, cars are racing from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill. Whoever does it quickest wins. Yep. Uh, and they've got uh, quite a quite a great, uh, quite a, an awesome program around the whole thing. There's stuff for kids. There's box it's car brilliant. races. There's vintage races. There's vintage displays. The the actual the guys competing for the top prize. You know they bring their R8s and they bring their their the GTRs the whole things, and, yeah. and they do they hammer those things up the hill. And there's every year there's a bit of action where guys aren't quite as talented as they'd like to be, mm. and some supercars go missing. So I'm not going to do it. Oh yes, I'm not going to do it this year. Oh no, <laughs> I run out of talent. Uh, <laughs> this year and for the next five uh, next three years, it's going to be sponsored by Jaguar Land Rover. It was sponsored by Renault, so they've taken over and well done. I think that is terrific because I think last year it wasn't sponsored. Really. I, I, don't, think, I think you might be right. I think yes. last year it wasn't yeah. sponsored. They did carry on. Well done, Jaguar yeah. Land Rover, for getting involved. Because it really is, I, th- I think, turning out to be a prestigious motoring yeah. event on, on our calendar. And, and the nice thing about it is it's becoming more and more entrenched. So it looks like mm. it's, it's set to stand. It'll happen every year. Brilliant. Um, it's in Neisner. It happens uh, between May 16th and the 18th. And now that Jaguar are involved, there are going to be some pretty special cars on display. Not only type not only their vintage stuff, but the new F-Type obviously will be there. The F-Type Coupe will be there. That looks the amazing. The XKRS will oh, certainly be there. stunning. So if you do have some time and you are in the Neisner area between May and uh, May 16th to the 18th, go down and partake or have a look at the very least at the Samola Hill Climb, now sponsored by Land Rover Jaguar. Very nice. Well done, guys. And then in my mail to you yesterday, I said that uh, there's always one extra thing that crops up. Of course. Up. Of course. So uh, I don't have a lot of detail because there's not a lot of detail, but I will tweet a link to a website uh, when we're done here for the Toyota Sports Car of the Future. The FT1. FT1, which is a mental looking thing. <laughs> it's there's, crazy. There's not a lot of detail about, uh, technically speaking, they don't know what motor it's going to have or even where the motor's going to live, but it is an awesome looking thing. <laughs> it's mental. So uh, if you follow me sp- uh, at Spike the Car Guy on Twitter, I will tweet a link to that straight away. Terrific stuff. There what? we go. Bren, that is awesome. When are you guys back on TV? Uh, we're back on air next Wednesday. We will. I think we're kicking off the year with our performance uh, feature that we filmed last year. Brilliant. Uh, but I'll give you all the details next, next, next week. week. There we go. Spike the Car Guy every single Tuesday right here on Gears and Balls Visual Radio. That'll be up on podcast as well. We'll also add quite a lot more information this year on the podcast so you can find out exactly what we're talking about mm-hmm. and you can spread it amongst your mates as well. Thanks, Brendy. Great to see you, my friend. Let's hope we have a great year together. Absolutely. See you guys later. Gears. Gears on balls.co.za. Weekdays, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m.